Many people hadn't even heard what Apple Reality is. The ones who had heard think it's a gimmicky product without gaming capabilities. When I look at Apple Reality project, I see a 20 years long iterative plan for replacing the iPhone. It is ready to plug into an existing store of millions of apps, now allowing for new ways of creativity in three-dimensional space. I reviewed the latest news from insiders like Mark Gurman and created this video for you. Let's get started. We have some details about how device is actually being controlled. Reality headset will work with a combination of eye and hand tracking. Let me give you an example. To control the device, you just look at something, whether you want to launch an app, swipe through a list or toggle a setting. To start an app or select a menu item, you look at the virtual object and pinch your thumb and index fingers together. This is how you select things. Pretty cool. Home page of the device will look similar to what iPhone and iPad have. Simply a grid of app icons that can be reorganized. Users will be able to pin widgets such as the weather, calendar, email and stock market performance among their app icons. The device will have a crown like the Apple Watch that lets users switch between VR and AR. When in VR, the wearer is fully immersed. When you press on the crown, AR mode is enabled. And content fades back, then user is surrounded by real environment with apps sitting in her field of view. Text input can be done through Siri voice assistant or a keyboard from an iPhone, Mac or iPad. But device can operate independently without an iPhone. Although Apple is working on technology for mid-air hand typing, it's unlikely to be available at launch, according to insiders. I would love to see mid-air typing or a virtual keyboard pieced in my desk in AR mode. This would be pretty cool. The headset's FaceTime software will provide advanced video conferencing with a realistic representation of user's face and body in VR. This enables two headset users to communicate as if they were in the same room. Unlike Meta's headset, which uses a cartoon-like avatar, these realistic avatars require high processing power and will only be available for one-on-one -on -one video chats. Additional users in group FaceTime calls will be represented as lower fidelity memojis. I expect full support for FaceTime calls between a headset owner and an iPhone owner, where later would have limited 3D presence for former. The device will feature productivity tools, including the ability to act as an external monitor for a Mac. Users will be able to view their Mac's display in VR, but still operate it using a trackpad, mouse or physical keyboard. Another feature targeted towards professionals. The headset's operating system, internally named XROS, will have similar features as an iPhone and iPad, but in a 3D environment, including Safari, Photos, Mail, Messages, Calendar, and apps from App Store, Apple TV+, Music, and Podcasts. Apple is also developing health tracking functions and its own AR content, which will focus on health and wellness. Early AR demos include a Zen garden and walking through all the places you will go book by Dr. Zeus, where fantastical and real world environments blend together. Gaming is expected to be a popular offering from third party developers. Additional to that, with full body and leg tracking, developers can create amazing new dance games. Apple TV Plus will be updated with immersive VR content. The headset aims to offer a dedicated video watching experience that simulates a large screen in weird environments like desert or space. As I reported before, the first product will be called Reality Pro and it will focus on professionals. Allegedly, the first generation headset will cost around $3,000. It is uncertain if this price is accurate. These rumors remind me of the iPad launch when everyone thought it would cost over $1000, but it was instead launched with a $500 price tag. It is expected to be released in March or April 2021 with an event focusing solely on this new product category, and it will initially be available in the US only. A follow-up product, Apple Reality One, will be released with a cheaper price tag similar to the cost of an iPhone 14. I'm expecting significant improvements in battery life and updated Apple silicon in the device. The alleged release year is late 2024 or early 2025. 
Apple has postponed all development work regarding its lightweight AR glasses and reallocated its resources to the upcoming Reality One headset and refining XROS in an effort to lower the price of the follow-up headset. According to Gurman, Apple won't be able to release this product until 2027. Everybody asking the same question. Okay, great, it's a mixed reality headset similar to Quest Pro, but what Apple is bringing to the table? I think we will see a lot of improvements towards usability. To be exact, amazing hand and eye tracking capabilities and design improvements for form factor and lighter weight. If rumors are true, we are looking at a device lighter than AirPods Max. And latency problem. I haven't used a VR headset without feeling sick. If rumors are true, Apple is promising a device with a strong integrated processor. Best in market, motion to photon latency. This means when you turn your head, everything needs to be redrawn so quickly, otherwise you feel sick. If Apple can solve nausea problem of VR headsets, that can be a huge step forward towards future. For me, outward facing screen is not a gimmick. When you are using headset, your face expressions will be visible to outside world. This tells me that they did their homework and took notes from usability research around isolation related problems of VR. This is important since it can partially normalize wearing a ski goggle around your friends. Technology products live and die with killer apps. That magical moment when you try to use it for the first time. For iPhone, it was multi-touch and internet in your pocket, web browsing, maps, app store. It becomes anything you need. For Apple Watch, it was fitness capabilities. What is the killer app for Reality Pro? Will it be virtual meetings with realistic avatars? Proward in the product naming suggests that focus on the launch event is going to be on virtual collaboration between colleagues who are not in the same room. Recently launched Freeform app was the first step towards that future. Tight integration with other Apple products like Mac may attract few professionals, but will it be enough to say I need this product in my life? One underappreciated potential killer app is LiDAR photography. We know device will have short and long distance LiDAR scanners, which will create 3D photos of your environment in milliseconds. This can allow companies and institutions to showcase their portfolios and venues in new ways that expand their reach. But making the processors powerful enough brought another concern. Having the device overheat while it's on user's face. To address that problem, Apple made the decision to offload the battery from inside of the headset to an external pack. It rests in a user's pocket and connects over a cable. I can already imagine some memes about this battery decision. The headset can last about 2 hours per battery pack, in line with rival products. The battery, however, is large, roughly the size of two iPhone 14 Pro Maxes stacked on top of each other. Rumors say initial testers were not happy with carrying that heavy battery. Battery life could create its own problems. If users want to watch multiple movies or play games for hours at a time, they may need to buy multiple batteries and frequently swap them out. An alternative solution would be to allow batteries to be charged in parallel via USB-C plugged to a power source, but then this would limit movement of users. Hard problem indeed. The company thinks the device has the potential to attract customers to Apple's retail stores, not just to buy the product, but to experience it. This could lead to additional purchases of other Apple products like iPad or AirPods. That's why Apple will be showcasing its new headset through a store within a store concept, a separate space within its shops dedicated to demonstrating the headset. This approach is similar to what company did with the launch of the Apple Watch. The new headset marks a shift in strategy for Apple. In the past, when the company entered new markets such as music players, phones, tablets and watch. There was already a significant interest among consumers. Apple's goal was simply to create a better product and beat the competition. However, AR VR headsets are still in their early stages and consumers may need more encouragement to consider purchasing such an expensive product. It's possible that Apple will market the Reality Pro as a consumer product, but it must be considered as a developer prototype. This would allow software makers to prepare for a future where more practical and affordable AR-VR products become available.
For the launch to be successful, Apple's developer community should create amazing new apps and games quickly. Ideally, better experiences than what is available on iPhone right now. If Apple can also reduce the headset's price by a thousand dollars and improve battery life, the company will be on the right track. It's unlikely that this device will reach the same level of success from day one as the iPhone, which generates 52.1% of Apple's revenue from sales alone. However, as a futuristic vision and as an enabler for selling more services, the headset category has the potential to find its own unique value proposition.